Hello, welcome to another edition of It's All About the Dogs. I'm your host, George Philip Quinlan, and today we're going to be talking about leash work. The number one problem that people have with their dogs is dogs dragging them down the street. It may not be the number one reason people come to see me for training, but I will tell you that any behavior problem that comes to me, aggression, frustration, uh, absentee, uh, anxiety, they all have one thing in common. All these dogs pull on leash. So what we want to do today is correct that and show you how to correct that. It's, very, it's a simple idea, but it may not be easy because we give in as human beings. We give in faster than the dogs will. So we're going to take you step by step. Today's show, I want to dedicate to the National Association of Dog Obedience Instructors. We're celebrating our 50th year as a professional dog organization. And if you are an obedience instructor and you want to test your skills and join an organization that really has some um, uh, support system to be with you and really find out where you are in your training and, and sharing ideas, I recommend you contact the National Association of Dog Obedience Instructors and see if you have what it takes to become a member. I also want to take a moment and thank Brenda Aloff. Brenda is the one that gave me the suggestion or the, we talked about this as a problem and I decided that this would be a fantastic topic for a show. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with my dog close by, Merlin Vici. Come here, buddy. And we're going to start teaching you how to incorporate your leash into your training because the training with your dog is built off a relationship. The dog has to want to be with you. If your dog is with you when he's off leash, is what we often see as obedience instructors, that the dog will does better off leash than they are on leash, but you can't always have the dog off leash. So what we're going to do is break this down for you, really simple, and talk about uh, the, the, the basic steps to stop pulling and to teach can't stop pulling if you don't teach the dog what you want, okay? So first step we need to do is we want to reach into our pocket. We want to take our cell phone. We're going to shut it off or leave it home because when I'm doing this, I need to stay, need to stay focused with my dog, and it's only fair. If I expect my dog to stay focused with me, I need to commit to my dog for that moment. Next thing we want to do is we want to talk about holding a leash. I have that little blue leash on purpose so you can see it clearly. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to be showing you that holding your leash is critical in communication down with your dog. Most people show up at my place with their hands wrapped with the leash like this over their wrist or wrapped around the leash like this and sometimes both. So what we want to do is teach you the best way to make communication with your dog is holding the leash in a very gentle manner. Uh, you can hold it like this over your, for your finger. Hey there, buddy. How are you? And, uh, and then close your hand, and you'll be amazed at how much strength you have to hold the dog. I have a habit of doing it this way. I can't explain why. It's just it's very natural. It's the same idea, except it's a loop over my finger. If I have an emergency, I can open my hand and drop the leash. So the idea again is this is the preference that I have, either over my finger with my hand closed or over the finger this way with my hand closed so I can communicate to my dog. The next step is teaching the puppy. I want you, I'm going to use this blue leash for this example because uh, I want you to see it. Come here, bud. When I put my leash on the my collar on the dog, you see how calm he is? I want my dog to be calm. So I, I practice putting collars on and off, on and off my dog. Not outside. You do it in the house. Do, sit down some time with your dog. You want to give him some affection. Practice taking his collar off and putting it back on. How is that connected? It's connected to everything because the collar is the pressure. On my website, allaboutdogstraining.com, there are three articles. One of them is called Positive Thigmotaxis. The other one is called Leash Phobia. And the third is called Equipment That Teaches Dogs to Pull. I recommend you go to the website, read the articles. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me under the contact on the website, and I'll answer your questions for you. But today, we're going to show you a videotaped version of those articles, OK, a condensed version. So the first thing I want is my dog to be able to like being with me. And you always start in your home. No sense in going outside if he won't stay next to you in the home or he or she. Next thing we do is we teach the puppy one step. Ready? 
close. Good. And if you want to use treats, you can. You want to use voice, you can. I wouldn't recommend using a toy teaching this to begin with, I would, but I do like to use treats. B, C. Oh, that's good. One step at a time. Who says you have to walk a half mile with your dog? Another one I like to do is come close, come front, and oh, good boy. When the dog comes and sits in front of me, I've got my dog's focus. Again, he's interacting with me. It's, it's training a dog is like dating. If I met my wife and walked out in front of her whenever we went out, we wouldn't be married right now. So I want my relationship. I can't teach the dog to come into a position if it's always there, so I want to teach him in front. Ready? Au pied. Oh, what a good boy. And yes, I'm using a lot of treats to show you the timing to use your treats. So if I'm walking with my pup, I practice, come close. Good. I don't have to go far to accomplish what I want. You can demand an extra uh, the sit, but if you don't have a decent sit, don't worry about the sit. Get the dog want to be with you. Make this fun. Come close. Front. Oh, it's a good boy. Okay. Good job. Nice. And so if he sits, he gets rewarded. Great. At the very first part of this training, I don't care if he sits. My sit is separated. My come is separated. My walking with me, being next to me, ready? I'm going to show you how little we use this. Ready? Oh, hey, good. I'm going to move around quick for the camera. Come close. So I want this to be a game so the dog learns that being next to me is the greatest place in the world to be. It's the safest place the world to be. One of the things that I love for a relationship is I often put my hand on my dog's chest and stroke them and get to let them know that this is the greatest place in the world to be. So it may not always be food. It might be touch. But if I can't touch my dog, if they don't like to be touched and they roam away, you need to fix that. But that's a different subject. Right now we're going to focus on leash work. But this is the relationship that I have with my dogs, all of my dogs, right off the bat. They learn that the touch every time they're next to me is powerful. So no matter what happens in the world, this is a safe place to be. They don't have to go out and challenge what it is. Again, read the articles. This will all start making sense as you look at this video and see the articles together. It'll help. So, again, I teach my pup to come front. Good boy. I teach my puppy to come to my side. Come close. Good. And I teach my dog to au pied. Au pied is healing. Good job. It's just a position. It's not a movement at this stage, folks. I teach the word heal. Au pied, heal. I teach heal as a position, and then I start adding movement in later bit by bit. So I want my dog to be able wherever he is. I will show you off leash what I'm talking about. I'm gonna take this off. Put it in my pocket. I'm gonna reward my dog with a treat out of camera range, but I want you to see that he understands the word. Ready? I see. Yes. Out of camera range. Well and okay. Oops. Let's try it again. Ready? Okay. Good boy. So they're learning the position. I would work on in front. If you, allow, if you allow the dog in front of you to walk down the street, then you struggle, you reward, you reward, reward. Then you have to struggle to get the dog to come back to you. But if I can teach my dog to stay close to me, if I teach him that this is the place I want you to be and everything else happens from this position, I can allow my dog to go sniff. I can tell Merlin, au pied. I can call my dog back to position. But if I teach my dog that being over there and being over there and being over there is the greatest place to be, how am I going to get him to come back? Now I'm going to struggle with him. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to show you something else. It doesn't matter the size of the leash. This is my, my street leash. And my reason for this is I want my dog to be close to me when I'm walking down the street, but it still must be loose. So I don't care if I'm using a six-foot leash, which I require for training. I don't care if it's a three-foot leash, what I, what I use for everyday life. Come close. Good. Come heel position. Good. Nice. It's all the same. I don't use the leash to control the dog. I tell my students the leash is used to prevent the dog from leaving not to force him to stay with you. 
Again, I'm going to repeat that. I use the leash to prevent the dog from leaving, not to force them to stay with you. If they don't want to stay with you, you don't have a dog. There's another problem that's associated with poor leash work, and that's poor recalls. And there's a third one, too. You want to know what the third one is? Give me a call. I'll share it with you. Okay, what we're going to do right now is, ready? Okay. I want to do is take you back to when Merlin was a puppy, and let's show you how it all started. Ready? Yeah. Oh, what a good job. And you say, oh, that's beautiful. Good job, Astro. This is Astro. He's Merlin's nephew. Come here. So I thought he would be per, oh, what a good front. And he is learning right now the same things that I taught Merlin. He's also learning, Opie, to come into heel position. I see, oh, good job. And the only reason I have the leash on right now is to show you how I am not using the leash. Ready? Opie. <gasps> Good job. Oh, what a good boy. I am no longer luring with Astro. Okay. Good boy. Because John has done a fantastic job. Um, I know when I say this, he thinks I'm schmoozing him. But the reality is, watch this puppy. You ready? Astro. Oh, good boy. Eye contact is critical to the dog's name. And I often ask people, what's the dog's name mean? And it means, look at me. Astro. Good boy. Can you heal with me? Good job. Good. That's all we need to do. The teacher's puppy, not the pull on leash. We don't need a lot of magic and running around the block. Astro, ready? Come front. Good boy. Oh, what a good dog. And again, teaching Astro that beside me and beside John is the greatest place in the world to be. Ready? Come on. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Good job. And again, touch is important. I like to put my hand on the chest and stroke the chest and the side of the ribs at the same time. And um, if you have your puppy overstimulated, you need to teach this so we don't end up having the puppy becoming all worked up and start biting. So what you, a lot of people have been taught is when the dog pulls to stand still and wait and wait and wait, which is brilliant in many ways, except I don't want to, um, if I want to teach the dog to work beside me, I've got to encourage beside me, beside me, beside me, before he'll make that connection that when he, that he comes to the end of the leash to come beside you. I want to make that clear again. I need to teach the puppy that being beside me Good, is the greatest place in the world to be. So when they do run out, I will show you, when they do run out to the end of the leash, they'll come back, come close, good job. And again, if I'm looking down and I'm not telling him to come into a heel position and I'm telling him to come close, then this is acceptable. And I'm going to reward this behavior for coming from something and coming towards me. If he picks up something we don't want him to have, I encourage him to come with me I could walk around saying, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. But it's going to be very exhausting and frustrating for you and the dog. But if I tell my puppy, ready, come close, come on. What's a good boy? Can you come into heel position? Oh, look at you. Aren't you doing marvelous? And then we reinforce this over and over. Have the leash on, even in the house. Even if I take the leash off, I should get the same behavior but understand, I want you to have the leash on so you get used to not using the leash. Leash phobia. Read the article. It's a wonderful um, explanation of why we behave certain ways. Ready? Good job. Now, we could work on so many different things with this puppy right now, but I want to focus on leash work only. Ready? Let's go. Walk with me. Good job. And I can step backwards. Look at you. Oh, what a good dog. Voila. Good job. Come front. So it's the same exact exercises. Oh, what a brilliant puppy. Yes. All four feet in the ground. If this is a way to connect with my pup, then touch is powerful as long as it's not overused and we pet the dog 
consistently. Now, if he starts to wander off, he's off leash, right? What am I going to do? Astro, BC, come here, little bugger. <gasps> That's my boy. That's my boy. So I'm going to do the same thing. He walked off. I rewarded him for coming back. He's also been taught to run back to me and not jump. He's been handled, as you can see. The leash collar doesn't phase him. This is good puppy training. Get the dog used to having the leash touched and handled, taken off, and put it back on. Even if it's a two-year-old dog who's pulled his whole life, you can teach this game all over again. So again, the leash is used to prevent the dog from leaving, not to force him back to me, never to force him to stay with me. He's got to be with me because it's a relationship. If I have to use my leash to control him all the time by doing this, when he's off leash, I'm not going to get him to come back. Please understand, just because he's on the leash, we don't let him have bad behaviors. You, I live in a place where my dogs, 95% of the time, they're off leash on their property. They're never on leash. But I have to put them on leash on the property so they get reinforced over and over on how to work on the leash. Isn't that right? Isn't that the way it's done? It is. Oh, what a brilliant puppy you are to be patient. So, topic, the first thing, let's review. I can't cover any more until you get your foundation. First step, shut your cell phone off. Turn the ringer off. And there's a picture of my dog. You probably can't see it. Uh, loose leash, meeting Dick Van Dyke. Leash wasn't tight. If I pull back on the tight, the leash, he might lean in and jump on top of Dick. I want him to be patient in everything we do that the leash stays loose. Shut your cell phone off. Focus on your puppy. Teach them when you're walking around the house, when you're feeding them, carry their food dish, and you say to them, Astro, you ready? Let's go eat over here, have your breakfast, and put the food dish down. So teach the puppy to walk beside you. You can teach the puppy to run ahead, but I really want you to think about what do you want from this dog when it's two years old? You see the size of Merlin? This is Merlin's nephew. We don't know how big he's going to get. But if Merlin's 90 pounds, chances are this puppy could end up being that high too. So I teach the pup. I teach yourself, shut the phone off, hold the leash properly so it's loose. I want you to be afraid of losing your dog so you stay more focused to the dog. If you do this, you're not afraid of losing your dog. You're just holding on for dear life. And that's a different type of fear. If the dog goes out and pulls on the leash, hey, that's mine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What's a good dog? If the puppy starts to pull and I just stop, I'm going to let him investigate something. That's one thing. If I tell him, go sniff. How's that for being on cue, huh? I'm going to let him sniff. If he gets a little snug, it's not the end of the world. And my one on the back, Astro, come here. Good boy. Very nice. I don't pull. I take up the slack, but I keep a you between you and the dog. Uh, a colleague and friend of mine likes to use the word, he keeps a J between him and the dog. Doesn't matter if it's a J or if it's a U. The idea is the leash is slack. You don't, you don't drag the dog. See what happens when you pull? That's called positive thigmotaxis. All right, opposition reflex, whatever you want to call it, but you're going to actually put more resistance on the dog. If the dog wants something over there and I start pulling the leash even harder, he's going to lean more into it and disconnect from me. That's mine. Thank you very much. Good job. You don't need to do that. You can stand up. Come on, you're a big dog now. So again, phone off. Get the dog used to having the leash put on and off. Hold the leash in a loose. Get that reward. Get the dog associated being with you. And, um, and start introducing new things to him by being quiet. Let the dog look. Dog's beside you, reward what you want, either by touch or a treat. Gentle touch, not exuberant touch. And if the dog goes out and investigates something, let him sniff, call the dog back, but don't pull him away from it. I want the dog to freely leave that thing and when they come back to get rewarded by from you. So I'm down with my little buddy here for a second. And uh, <laughs> come here, come here. So. You can let the dog drag the leash around the house if you need to in the beginning. It's not an awful thing. Leash can be used in the house. 
people associate the leash strictly for being outdoors. I think having the leash on the dog in the house is a good idea as long as you're not dragging the dog off the couch with the leash, dragging the dog away from the doorway with the leash. It's to teach you how to get control, how to teach the puppy what you want without becoming dependent on the leash. All right, the leash again, remember, is used to prevent the dog from leaving, not to force the dog to stay. Listen, these little guys, as young as he is, he's now 16 weeks old, still never with us long enough. Before you know it, he's 12, 15 years of age. I want this puppy to live the best life he can possibly live. And we start as a baby and we encourage. If you have an older dog, you do the same thing. Start treating them like a pup and bring them up quickly. Because folks, really, at the end of the day, it's all about the dogs. Thanks for joining us.